we're back in the old NC rag, heading to my actual old house, my mom's house. The goal today is to go catch some bait and then hit a swamp for Gar and Both. And if y'all don't know Gar and Both, then they're on my channel. I love the fish so much. It's just there's there's something about it, kind of like a little highway series type deal. It's pretty interesting how we do it. It's gonna be a great video. I'm gonna pick this back up once I hit my neighborhood and let's go catch some bait. Just hop back in the truck. I grabbed some bread at the old house. I used to love this pond so much. Literally out here every single day trying to fish, stock it. I actually stocked seven both in, a, in one of the second ponds right here. I did a lot of maintenance for the time I lived here, but then. A thousand people moved in and all these kids and they just literally they trashed the whole entire place These ponds aren't worth a darn no more. Only time I come here is to get bait. I think we'll need about two or three I have these fish so trained to where watch this All I'm gonna do is just get a little bit of tension throw some bread out And they're ready there Pretty much every year I stocked this pond with bluegill and bass. I just I did it, so I did everything. Nobody appreciates it though, because they just ruin it. I've come down here so many times where people have killed bass. Last year somebody cut a triangle out of like a six, but one of the last six pounders in here, there's only two left. They killed it when it was full of eggs. I just I don't get people, man. Know what you guys are thinking? I'm talking about how people kill fish in this pond. I'm taking fish, but. I mean, I stocked them and I maintain them. I know how many are in here, and that's one thing that's overpopulated in this pond is bluegill. Taking a couple here and there is not going to hurt. Bingo. Number one perfect size, it's a keeper. And first one was smallest one's a little bit bigger, so we'll take him just to make sure we have enough for bluegill. Every time I've left over, I just feed the fish just to make their day and make them happy. Little do you guys know, I have something so exciting that is coming up. I mean, it's it's gonna it's gonna change the channel a lot. I'm really excited because one, I mean, it's just it's pretty awesome, and two, it's just it's gonna show y'all a lot about me with, with this channel. So it's exciting. It'll be announced soon or built soon. Ooh, that's a little hint. We have the bait. We have the gear. Now I'm just waiting on Dylan. My truck feels like it's about to blow up. Next clip you'll see will be us actually heading to the spot. It's pretty cool. It's when you guys see it, it's like a giant swamp. It's it's very unique. The next clip you'll see will us be actually going to the spot. I'm gonna bring out the nice camera so y'all can see some cool shots. This place is just like a canal slash swamp, and it actually holds a good amount of fish. Oh, there goes that. Super pumped for this video. See y'all when we get there. Ooh. Guys, we have made it to the old little, I'm gonna call it spillway, creek, swamp, I don't know what you wanna call it. Dylan's right there cutting up the bait. I don't know if you guys saw the clutch I just showed you. The heads up for that, it's, it's hard to talk. It's windy today, so I don't know how the audio is gonna be, but we're on the side of the road. On that, I'm zooming. On that side, y'all can see it. it's another one of these, but over here it goes all the way straight back. And we've caught some over here before, they haven't been that big, we've caught more right here. I don't know if it's just the bigger body of water, all the bait hides here. I've done some videos here before, this is where I actually caught, we've caught seven bow from, from here and actually brought them to my neighborhood pond when I was living over there. So y'all wanna go see that, go check it out, it's actually pretty cool. We, we, we pulled some big ones out of here, six, seven, eight pounds. The ones we've been catching lately haven't been that big, but I know they're still in here and there is gar in here too, but... Y'all will see the whole process of how we have to set the hook and if if you know what you have a gar or a buff and it's just a pain in the butt. But I love catching these fish. I hope you guys enjoy this video. We're about to get tied up, put some good bait on and cast out. Let's see if we can catch. Ready, Dylan? Let's do it. Grab a nice little chunk of bluegill. Put the hook through that, no scales on it. Two out little circle hook. I think Dylan's using a straight shank. The method of gar and both and fish, and more of both. And you literally just cast out and yo-yo this bait off the bottom. You actually see the fish come up and try to breathe air. So they're always they're they're suspending fish, they're always moving up and down. So you're pretty much just waiting till you feel the thump. Give them some slack. When I say both and hit it, they normally will slap the rod like that. So you can tell when you have a both and 
Go are normally take it and just kind of run. But you gotta realize too, these fish, all they have in their mouth is teeth and bones. So it is pretty hard to set the hook in them sometimes. Bowfin, gar, crappy and largemouth have to be my favorite fish to catch. A lot of people shoot these fish in, gar and carp and all that. I just, I don't understand. Every fish has a purpose. They're actually keeping this little spillway probably clean because all this is all junk. It's like all trash through here. It's not the cleanest water. I, I love the fish. They're really cool. I've caught some pretty big ones too. And well, I actually almost broke the record doing it. So I love them. What's pretty neat about this fish too, like I said, Gar and Buff, they both have to come up and breathe air. So if you were just sitting here patient, y'all, it's a little windy today, but sometimes you can see these fish come up and they either swirl or chasing bait. They're always doing something, very active fish. So until we see that, we just jig for them. All right, guys, Dylan just said he has one to run him with it. What you got, D-Man? So. Hey, he's pulling over here. Feels like a bar. Oh, he's coming all the way over here. Oh, he's changing directions? Yeah. He's going back this way now. It's so right. cool how these fish fight. I'll get him help. Got him? What you got? I don't know. Biggin. Oh, it's a gar. It's no, big. it's one of those pickerel. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, what? That is a pickerel. Get him up. Dude, that's so weird to catch that in here, man. Did you see what I was saying, though? Like, yeah. it was biting really, really weird. Yeah. That's why I thought it maybe it was like a small guard just gnawing on it, but I couldn't really tell. This right here is a chain pickerel. Looks like a pike. All right, guys, this is our first fish of the day. It's a little pickerel. He put up a good little fight, and he was biting it really weird, so. The only thing I was expecting was a gar. I was definitely not expecting this, so. Go tell your friends to bite. <laughs> They're cool, man. <laughs> like, <ugh. laughs> so first fish was a chain pickerel. That's like a, it's it's honestly that's a really cool catch. There is we've seen some bass in here, but this body of water really just holds everything. And there's still bluegill. I mean, we see them popping like it's a good population, but half the fish in here have teeth. I mean, I don't know what where they came from. If this connects to some river, we're gonna do the research on it, but. I just got bit. Yeah, he, he spit it and dropped it. But it's just, it's really cool. It's a cool little population of a bunch of little teethy fish in here. Oh, I, I'm, I'm bit. Yep, he's taking off with it now. Oh, we got a runner. She's taking it. I don't know what it is. It was a very small bite. I didn't feel the bow in him. So this is the hard part. It could be a gar, and if it is a gar, you want to let him eat it for a long time. But if it's a bow in him, it's he's going to swallow the hook, and it could could kill him. So it's hard to tell. Next time it gets tight, I'm gonna, I'm gonna set the hook. He's going into a snap. I think this is a gar. I don't know if I'm gonna get him. Come here, I got him. Oh, nope, it came off. That was a gar. That happened so much. It felt good too, but I think that was a gar. And she gone. And so is my bait. Nice. Well, we'll bait back up so we can get another one. Fresh piece of bait. I love it when a bowfin takes it because when that sucker grabs it, he don't let go. Oh, yeah, there's one. You're running with it. We have a taker, and I'm pretty sure this is a bowfin just from how how aggressive he hit it. Did he drop it? He's acting weird. He stopped running with it. There he goes again. I'm gonna go for him. I got him. That's a bowfin. Oh, a little bowfin. Not a little bowfin. Look at that jump. Swine through here. Oh, dude, she's pretty. Look at that jump. Get up here. She's up. Yeah, that's a fat one, dude. A healthy looking fish. I want y'all to see something. Look at those teeth. They hide in the gums. Look at those teeth. <laughs> that would suck to get bit by this thing. This is the first bowfin of the day. Super pretty. I'm gonna guess it's around five pounds. A little bit better than I average in here. Like I said, we used to catch some seven, eights, almost nines, but I took those out and stocked them in the pond. So it's good to see that there's still some pretty healthy fish in here. Boy, she jumped good, fighting good. It's a beautiful fish. Perfect little shot of the head. These fish are so prehistoric. I mean, it's just amazing that we can still catch these. And he's actually dripping something on my, on my leg. I don't know what that is. Super pretty fish though. We're going to throw him back and catch her again. Thank you, baby. Can't get down there too, so I'm just going to toss her in. Thank you, baby. She go. Then we got a pickerel. Yeah, we got a bowfin, a pickerel. Chain pickerel, I live a little pike to me. I know there's all different species though, but two very unique fish in one day. It's been a little slow. It's because it's hot. Later into the evening, they'll bite a little bit better. We're not really seeing any surface right now, so we're just having a toss out. Just pretty much just let it sit, jig it every once in a while, but 
Produce two fish, one almost being sick, five, six pounds. We'll take it. Grab us a new piece. Oh, we're gonna grab the old nice little head. That joker right through the lips. It's a big piece. If we get a guard, we're screwed. He's not gonna get the hook, but we're shooting for the big old bowfin. If we can catch a five, I want a seven. Like I said, just cast out. Gets a little uncomfortable sitting on those little metal railings they got right here. So then we'll switch it up and jump down here and sit. It's not bad. It's a beautiful day catching some pretty prehistoric looking fish. I love it, man. All right, we're approaching that 45 minute mark. We have not had any more bites. It's been kind of slow, but like I said, it is starting the day. The day it's hotter, so these fish, they're just, they're just in a structure a little bit more. When the evening hits, they start to move around. They start coming up a little more. There is one right by Dylan's bobber. Get a little bit more active. Hopefully we can each pull out one more for y'all. Is that one taking it? Oh yeah. We got a runner. This piece of bait is very, very big. So I do not know what has it and how big it is. So I'm gonna let him eat it for a little bit. Fingers crossed we can land this fish. This bait's giant and it's gonna be risky. Hopefully it's just a big old bowfin. He done swallowed this thing already. I don't know that. I'm gonna go for him. I got him. He's around that stick. No, he's in the stick. He just freaking broke off. Broke me off, dude. In the stick. He felt decent. So did that stick. Well, I guess let him have him for too long, but you never be too sure. Grab me another hook. It was hard to judge because that was such a big piece of bait. He had it, he went right to that log, wrapped himself around. I feel like a bug thinks I felt him shaking. What do we have here, Dylan? A little snapping turtle. Old snapper. His claws are gonna dig in too much. I don't know how we're gonna be able to try to get them up. It's weird fishing a place like this, like the swamp. You hit a lot of these turtles. This is the first one, actually, the first one I've seen swimming today, and the first one we've called out here. And I've done fish here a lot. So it's actually. Dylan's losing his hook and his bait, but it's, I guess it's too kind of cool to catch and never seen one in here in, until today. And he's up. Um, he's just a little fired up, I don't blame him. He's actually pretty unique, dude. For living in this water, his shell is really green, but. So here's what we're gonna do. His legs are like orange. Yeah. Damn, the hook's right there. I might better to, oh, he just came out. Nice. I was about to say, the hook was barely holding on. I now it's stabbed into my mic. All right, dude, you're free. No hook in your mouth, no line. Here's your knife back, Dylan. Sorry that we caught you. This is the he's all orange underneath. Yeah. There you go, buddy. Back to your swamp. Not the most exciting video, but we did catch a little pickerel that fought on this hill. Decent sized boat from here and an ugly old snapping turtle. What sucks now is that we're out of bait. We're gonna pack up and I'll see y'all at the truck. We're almost at the truck. Just really quick, I just wanna talk about this day. Like I said in the beginning, Bowfin and Gar, they're actually, can y'all see me? Is the sun too bad? Bowfin and Gar, they're just, they're really cool fish and I actually, I enjoy catching them a lot. And they're really easy to catch. They love dead fish. And if you guys are trying to catch a bigger fish, I know bass, it, take, it takes a little more experience to try to learn how to use those baits and really find out how to work those big fish, but Bowfin and Gar, they kind of just grow to that size anyways, and it's not really hard to catch them. Anywhere from 14 to 17 pound mono can do the job. Get you a little circle hook, or you can do a strength shank like Dylan was using today. Two to four size. Pretty much any dirty water it holds these fish. I don't know why, like rivers have them. But if you can find a spot that has still water, Y'all, get out there, go for it. Any little canal like we're fishing today, anything off the side of the road, go hit it, because it, it can hold, my, I've caught both in 15, 17 pounds. If y'all want to see those videos, go on my channel. I have a ton of gar and both in, how to catch them. I have all these videos, guys, just go check them out. I really appreciate it. Stay tuned for the next one. Like I said, I have something exciting coming up. Actually, two videos. It's going to be a pretty cool build, so y'all stay tuned. I appreciate it, guys. Let Bass TV.